Uh oh. Woohoo! Got it. There we go. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. I don't have my monitor on, so I can't see what is going out. I can see it. Yes. Very good. And how are you doing? Okay, so I'm gonna go back. How many people do you see in there? Cool. Okay, cool. So, uh, hey, I had an overwhelming response, uh, at least compared to past judges' corners. So I had a lot of questions. I had uh, some different concerns about judging and what we do when we're judging and, and what happens and why some things happen and other things didn't. And so actually I was kind of excited that we had that much uh, uh, input this time. So um, that, that's a good thing. So I was, I was trying to decide if I should keep this going for next year and it kind of this month kind of made it sound like we should. So I think we'll We'll take it into the new year and see what happens. Um, I want to start off by saying, and I'm hope hopefully I was trying to wait a little bit, and make sure some of these people are here that were coming. Uh, some of the people that asked questions, um, but competition is made to be uh, an educational experience for everyone in attendance, whether they have entered or not. Do you see my screen? I just have my thing up here in the corner so I can see me. Uh, the judge's corner is just another way to give our group extra educational experience and to have more discussion about competition, judging, and entries. So that's kind of why I put it together so we can all talk about things. I know uh, lately we've been getting good images. Is that because of you, my echo? Uh, lately, we've been getting good images that people have been sending in, but I really wish some people would send uh, some of the other stuff too, not, not just the good images. Uh, but I understand why people are sending in good images because they feel that some of the judges are, judges are just going, hey, that's a good picture. <laughs> and, and then they score it, you know, an eight or a nine or whatever. So I kind of get that. And, and I'm glad people are sending them in and I'm glad we're talking about them. So uh, you know, as usual, if anybody wants to talk, I'm always open when we're doing things like this. So please feel free to, you know, just say, hey, and I'll stop talking for a minute and somebody else can comment. Um, moving on to our first image. Uh, this is creative advanced color. Um, the image title is Be the Light. Now this scored an eight, eight and a nine. So good scores. Comments were very well done. Tone is nice. Outline of the bulb is nice. The blur of the reflection, very well done. Very nice image. Um, I think I actually even heard a couple other images on there. Um, I, I went back on some of these and I kind of listened to the replay uh, from our recording from the YouTube. So. Um, the one, one of the comment was a lot of times the, the filament is blown out, but this is not so very nice image. I think, I think kind of one, one from the maker, I'm trying to foresee what the makers seeing, but I think they were kind of wondering why this didn't get a better score. Not that two eights and a nine is a bad score. But if I was going to say the only reason is because this is a creative category, and, and although it may feel like you did very creative with the filament, I don't think this is a very creative image. Now, this is an astounding image. I love it. I think it's amazing. Um, 
but I think maybe in a still life or, you know, even maybe in a commercial uh, category, it may have scored just a little bit higher. And we're going to talk about this in just a minute, a little bit more. But first, I want to see if anybody else uh, would like to say anything about this image. I was waiting for a minute. I think somebody had their microphone on with a TV or something in the background. But okay, so we're going to talk about the next image. I, and then, and then I, we'll I like to say I, I like the colors. I like the uh, subtlety of the colors and the way the colors go together. That really uh, strikes my eye. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think this is absolutely amazing. It's a great image. I, I almost wish I would have taken this picture. <laughs> I think they did a really good job with the outline of the ball. So do I. And I'm not even sure if it is just lit from behind or if they've actually done something creative wise as to stroke the bulb a little bit i don't know and and that might be you know again that might be why the maker put it in here if they did anything creative as far as drawing that line they may have felt it needed to go into this category could they have done the outline and use a multiple shot uh it could be and and you know maybe necessarily the reflection is not actually sitting on something in a true reflection maybe it's a, a copy of the the image flipped over and then faded out in the bottom, which actually even makes it uh, uh, even mm -hmm. more nice for me to think of the work that they put into to making this image happen. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the next image real quick. Um, get my papers here. Sometimes people send me multiple images, so it takes me a minute to figure out where my my words go with that image. So this is this is also advanced color creative. This scored three eighths. Uh, the title is Through the Woods. Comments, I really love this image. I would have given it a nine except for the bright colors at the top of the image. Um, I, I think I actually wrote that wrong. I think the the judge said the bright highlights at the top and i think i wrote colors so that might be my mistake on that comment uh additionally if it had been if it had been all the colors all the way through i would have definitely given it a nine i think three eighths is very good i think this definitely fits in this category of creative um it's like I'm kind of drawn between I like seeing this because we know that's a little bit of sky up there. But at the same time, I understand it's a little bit bright and and that may be a deterrent in a competition setting. Would anybody else like to comment? Okay, so, I think maybe if they had just cropped down and left some of the sky, but cropped some of that out. Yeah, I think that's what the one of the judges' comments was. Uh, if it had been all the colors all the way through, meaning if you cropped down here, then it would have just been just the colors through the bottom, and you wouldn't have seen those white highlights in the top. Personally, I don't find the highlights very... Uh distracting they seem to be just just be part of the scene so to me they weren't uh, they weren't jarring they weren't distracting they didn't take away from the image it's just that's the way a force looks and, and i agree with that that's a jack correct i agree with you and that's why i was saying i'm kind of drawn a little bit in between of knowing that that those highlights up there are the sky and i kind of want to see a little bit of sky in the forest and I think that kind of works with the image a little bit as well. So, so sometimes, you know, you, you can't please all three judges. Sometimes you can please all three judges. 
Um, now, what I want to talk about real quick, because we're going to jump uh, from images, we're going to go into something else, because this is a couple comments that um, I had about competition entries this time. And it, it always comes up at least once a year. I usually get it if, if I'm that involved. But uh oh, let's see. I, so blue, red, white. I think we still give out whites. Uh, first, second, and third. Daryl, do we still give out white ribbons? Yes. Okay, so blue, red, white, first, second, third. But what happens is in Nevada Camera Club, we technically have two competitions. One is the scoring of the image to give it a score and a rating on a technical aspect of the creativity, the composition, the light quality, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have Within the category, we have a placement competition. So technically, there's two competitions. So our first one is judges scoring. Judges score five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, seven being average, eight being above average, nine, of course, being perfect, uh, six being below average, and a five. I don't think I've seen a five since I've started judging. I think I've seen barely any sixes. Uh, personally, I don't necessarily think that everything in competition is above average. And I think the judges need to be a little more stringent with their scoring. Okay. That's beside, that's not what we're talking about today. Let's move on. Um, three judges, three scores. So three fives would be a 15, three nines would be a 27. Obviously that shows you the scale of everything. So to get a first place ribbon, you have to get three eights, which would be 24. So above average would give you a first place ribbon. To get a second place ribbon, you have to have average three sevens, which would give you 21. Uh, to have a third place image, you would have to have uh, three sixes, which is 18. Even though that's below average, but that's still scoring range. So that is the score. So when you get your score, now the last two images we looked at, uh, one got three eights, which would be a 24, and the other one got two eights and a nine, which would be a 25, which is just above that above average, a little bit better. Uh, both of those actually qualify for a first place ribbon. But what happens is we move into placement. So if you look at my first section here of scoring the first image i'm going to go back real quick because i didn't put them in here again this is the first image this scored a 25 this one scored a 24 but what happened is we now went into placement and the second image placed higher so it gets the first place ribbon meaning the next ribbon in place for the second is going to be the one that placed second, which was being the first image, although it scored higher. So this does happen every once in a while. Not a lot, but it does happen once in a while. And some reasons that that might happen is either you have one judge that really, really likes that image, so it scored a little bit higher maybe than the other judges. Or again, it may score higher because the judges really liked it. But then when they go back for placement and they're looking at the category, maybe that image didn't fit the category as much so that they, the other image was better fitted for the category and might have placed higher. So there's, there's other reasons. I'm just giving you my thoughts, but there is other reasons that can happen. So I did do this, this other scenario here because Last time that I was questioned with all of this, this is pretty much what happened. The first image got a 26 and the next image got a 23. So what happened is that image only placed, even though it was selected first in placement, it only scored high enough to get a red ribbon. So meaning that other image that scored a 26 now can only get a white ribbon coming in third place, even though it scored much higher. Does anybody have any comments on that? Oh, man. Sorry. It took me years to figure that out. 
I know. And some people <laughs> still, still don't get it. Some people still get upset when it happens. Yeah, I have a comment. I think if there's a tie, there should be a runoff. And if you want to speed things up, you should get rid of the second system. Uh, meaning the placement? Yeah, the placement, yeah. Just place them the way they come in points unless there's a tie. <clears throat> yeah, and 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 I'm familiar with other clubs that do that, and and I understand it. Well, I'm just saying it to speed things up. That's all. No, yeah. I know, uh, and I understand that. I get it, Michael. I know, and and you know, it's like I've been I've been to other clubs that do things a little bit better, and I've been to other clubs that do things a lot worse, and. And I've just kind of grown to the way we've done things here. Um, I don't know, maybe force a habit. <laughs> but I get it. No, I get it. And I appreciate you talking. Appreciate everybody talking, everybody's comments. Okay, so we're going to go on. Unless anybody else has anything to say, I'm going to move on here. Let me get my next paper out. Jerome, something to remember is that the score is what's actually applied for the Photographer of the Year award, not the ribbon color. This is true. I'm glad you said that, Rick, because I didn't even put that in there. So, so when when it comes to POY, as far as monthly competitions goes, uh, your POY points are scored by the score. It does not go by the ribbon. Uh, only the outside competitions go by the ribbon um, for points. The, the ribbon, the ribbons are given values of points on outside competitions with everything inside. And and I I haven't done it. I think it might be a little bit unethical, but I have seen people enter this two or three times until it gets a blue ribbon. Because if it doesn't get a blue ribbon, it still qualifies to be entered again. And I've seen people do that just to keep their points up. So that's something else to think about, especially if you're a fight for POY, which I believe we're going to do for the next year too. So yes, everybody keep that in mind. Okay. So moving on, I got the next image. I just don't have my paper. Okay. So this was abstract color advanced title is Imaging birds. This scored a nine nine eight. It did get a blue ribbon. Yes, it was right on the edge. Right Ooh, on the edge. Yeah. Uh, comments are the immediate impact of this is just beautiful. I love all the different patterns. I love the colors. I'm going to give you one comment from the maker just because they added it. Um, do, 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 do. I found several birds in this image and had fun creating it. So, and I can see that it is a fun image. I think I had that impact. Wow. When it came up, I don't remember if I scored it or not. I uh, can't always remember what I've scored. I try. Um, but I think this is handled very well. I love the panoramic feel to it. Um, a lot of design, maybe a little bit too much going on. Um, although I do like the one bird right here that's centered and this kind of draws my attention and I like all this. So I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying this is what the judge thought, but maybe there was a little bit extra over here, you know, for one of the judges and that's why it got the A. It's just a thought. And Jerome, I definitely don't think you needed to change it at all. Yes. Jerome, um, this is actually my print, our image, and it's imagining instead of imaging. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know if that makes a big difference or not. But um, I, you can't see my screen, but when I look at it on the right of that bird that you pointed out, there's a head going up with a beak. It comes down, and then there's a here. big... No, on the right. Is this one here? On the right side. Keep going to the right. To the right. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah right there. The right. Yeah, if you go, there's the, there's the 
feathers. And then if you go, wish you could see my screen, uh, right, you can see a beak, a head, feathers. Where's that? Yeah, you're, you're over too far now. Yeah, keep coming to the right. A little further, a little further, a little further, a little right further. Here. Yeah, no, go up right there. Go up. Okay, the, there's the beak. Okay. There's, there's the, come down. There's the head. And then okay. you swoop around and you have the feathers. Okay, and I'm starting to see that. I'm starting to see a little bit of that now. Okay, <laughs> I think and I have a great imagination. Yeah, no, and that's great. And, and, you know, and not everything and not everybody has to see everything you see. And some people might see things that are new or different in there that you didn't see. And that's what makes it a great image, you know. And, I just and think I this think is a great this, image. Yeah, and I think this absolutely is. I mean, it's only one point off having that perfect. I know, I know nowadays everybody wants that 27. And I do realize, even though I said earlier, I don't think everything is above average that we're entering in competition, but I do realize that the majority, the majority of the people entering right now are our older members. They've been doing this a long time. And, and I do take that into effect and, and take that into account, I should say. Cool, very good, very good. Anybody else have anything to say about this one? I love the green. Reminds me of the Green Goblin. I, I think I think of that maybe because we're watching all the Spider-Man movies right now. I can see that hanging on the wall. Yes. Okay, I am going to go on to the next image. Let's see where I'm at here. Okay, next image. This is actually from January 2020 competition. So this is a little bit older. Um, still life, advanced monochrome. I don't have the scores, but the maker said they got a red ribbon. So uh, also didn't have comments. So if anybody would like to comment, I like this. Um, you know, if we're trying to look and see what we see in the image, I kind of see a little bit of a heart within this. That kind of intrigues me to look a little bit more. Uh, I really like the contrast with the design of the vines, the bright whites and deep blacks, more to the outside. I love the uh, deep blacks. Although I like the subject matter, I don't feel there's a strong point of view. That is my comment. So I had to write some of my comments down so I could remember them. <laughs> but so I think there's a little bit too much going on. There's not a direct subject. Although the subject is all of this stuff, it's not, it's not a direct subject. And I think that's the only drawback. And maybe that's why it only scored in the red ribbon range. But again, we don't have the score, so it could have scored higher than that and just drew the red ribbon in placement. I agree with uh, Jerome's comment. But I, like the, I like the depth of it. It's a very deep image. You can, you can feel yourself being drawn into it. <clears throat> I agree. What I like about it is it does have your eyes roaming throughout the image, but there's really nothing for it to roam to, if that makes sense. Yes. But it keeps your eyes active. It does. It does. It keeps you going around. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next image. Uh, this again is from January 2020. So I don't have any information on this one as well. Uh, it was advanced pictorial color. And again, this one received a red. Um, I like the snow powdered foreground and, and a little bit throughout the middle of the image. I think your rule of thirds is a little bit high in the back. 
maybe if you brought that down and had a little bit more sky, that would give you uh, a little bit more composition. Um, there's nothing in the foreground except except this this uh, area that has the snow. That that it it is of interest, but there's nothing like like if we had one of these up here in the foreground or you know a, a yucca cactus or something that kind of gave us more depth. I'm not saying this image doesn't have depth because it does and the light is what gives us depth having light here and a little bit more shadows here and then the sky and the mountains have a little bit of light in the background so that does give us a little bit of depth through there. Um, I think this is you know a very nice image. I'm going to say average to above average i think it would get sevens and mates uh it did get a red ribbon and that's probably about where i would have scored it um it is a nice picture and i could see this hanging you know at a bank <laughs> wells fargo bank or something like that so it's definitely not something i would get rid of it you know because it only got the score it did i wouldn't throw it away or anything anybody else like to comment on this one I don't like the very bottom uh, where everything is cut off. I would have cropped in a little bit to get rid of it. <clears throat> this stuff here, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's kind of ticky tacky, but I don't like it. <clears throat> very good. Okay. So we are going to move on to the next image. Uh, this one is Intermediate Photojournalism Color. It scored 888. Uh, the title is Colorful Vandalism. The comments were, the color palette is very pleasing. To improve it, crop off the fence on the right. Maybe not as bright. Tone down the brights of the whole image. T tone down the brights of the whole image. Um... Uh, I, I agree losing this fence in this tree. I don't think this is adding to the story we're telling. I think most of the story is right here, which is maybe just kind of, uh, you know, a third or half of the image. Um, I can't decide if this adds to this. It definitely doesn't add to the vandalism part of it. It may be being across the street and shooting just the front of this straight on might have been a stronger image. I mean, three eighths is good. Uh, probably score a little bit higher being an intermediate. I think this is a good, good try for intermediate. I think you did not do a bad job. Uh, technically, you have some colors. You know, if we want to talk about diagonals, you do have a little bit of diagonals. I just don't feel that these diagonals are adding a lot of impact to the image. Anybody else like to comment on colorful vandalism? I agree with what you said. I would have cropped off from the left also, or shot it straight on like you said would be much better. And, and it is too bright. So I think eight was pretty generous. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's my image and I, uh, I definitely agree with your comments. I did shoot it from across the street. You see that branch on the right? That tree is right in the middle of the uh, building. This one here. Street. Yeah. So if you go across the street, that, that tree cuts the uh, building in half. And I also agree, I'd, I'd like to cut off more of the left. There was too much on the uh, left there. But it was a uh, it was difficult to uh, try to get co good composition on it. I was really startled when I walked across, walked onto the street and saw that <laughs> yeah tried all different angles <laughs> yeah no it's, it's a great find and and i definitely you know i give you kudos for seeing this and actually trying to work with it because i i see a lot of things and and sometimes later on i i think later that damn it i wish i would take a picture of that or sometimes i even think damn i wish i had a camera with me <laughs> <laughs> okay very good okay we are moving to the next image this is Advanced Still Life Color, untitled. It scored a 788. Uh, comments, 
It's very interesting. Um, it's a very interesting object. Looking at the glass on the bottom could have been darkened or blurred down. Now, maybe I, I don't see glass, but maybe I didn't understand the judge's comment. Um, I'm guessing they're just talking about the, oh, oh, the bottom of the glass being the wooden thing, not actual glass. Okay. Uh, because my eyes keep going to the bottom. So, so this judge is just saying this area here is too bright. Um, I don't agree. Uh, I think the image is too dark and the background is too bright. <clears throat> so I would lighten the image and darken the background. I, I kind of agree, Michael. I, I, I think the biggest problem is this direction of light is not necessarily great for the carvings. I think that's the hardest part. Um, and again, that's just my opinion. I think if this had a softer light, like if you could have held up a diffuser where this light was coming in, it would have filled the light around here and you would have seen all the carvings on the inside as well and not just where the bright light is. So I think that would have helped a lot. I don't know if you were allowed to touch this or move this. I don't know if it's sacred or if it was sitting in a shop and you could have bought it, but I think having two different backgrounds is distracting. If we had all this in the background on both sides, or maybe all this, I'm not sure if this would have been as well, but I think this would have been nice if you could have moved over to the left a little bit and had all this for the full background. I think that would have helped a lot. Um, I think this is very interesting. Uh, I think the composition, putting him bullseye right in the middle, I think was was a good idea. And and that's about all I got. I like the hair. You know, the hair came out good with his lighting. I think just the face and the carvings didn't. That that needed to be a little bit softer. Cool. Oh, okay. So how many we got on there? Just curious. Yeah, very good. Okay, next image we have advanced still life color. This is the door. Uh, this got a seven, eight, nine. So here's one of those images that the judges were all over the place. One judge completely loved it. One judge completely hated it. The other judge is pretty right in the middle saying, I like this image, it's very good. Uh, comments, it had a lot of comments. Uh, I believe two judges, maybe three judges commented on this. Um, one of the judges said, I'm the seven. The colors are very nice. I really like how the chili peppers are draped around the door. Focusing more on the door would make it a more powerful image because the element on the left is distracting with the main sub, the main subject is the door. So basically he's saying crop around this window here somewhere and just focus on this area here. Uh, he did not like this address plaque within the image. Um, immediately the next judge says, I think this is a very nice presentation of a New Mexican doorway. Cropped a little tight on the right side, but the chilies really add to the add to it. And the plaque off to the left just adds a bonus to the picture. Adds a bonus to the picture. Uh, oh yes, the first judge, I had made a note up here, the first judge said it was cropped, cropped a little bit tight on the right. So both judges, the high and the low, agreed that, oh, darn it, sorry. Uh, Agreed that I can't get my thing out of my screen. Uh, they agree it's a little bit tight over here. Um, one judge likes this, one judge doesn't. Doesn't. One judge would have scored it higher if it was just the door, and then we had a judge somewhere in the middle there. Comments? Uh, I was the. Go ahead. I, I was the high scorer, and uh, 
I spent about six months in, in Albuquerque and Indeed, when I left work there, they gave me a little wooden thing with chilies on it. So it really <laughs> reminded me of that. So it was a little bit touching my heart, I think. Uh, the plaque, if it had been put on the wall closer to the window, I think the composition for the picture would have been better. But I don't think that's why they uh, built their house. Yes. Um. I think the lighting is very nice. If this was shaded, it worked out well. Uh, you know, trying to look in here and see if maybe there's an overcast sky, which which gave you a nice soft light, I think helped a lot. If the light was uh, bright and sunny, it probably wouldn't have got this same image. So I think this was shot at the right time of day. I do believe I like the chilies around the door. I think that adds a lot, adds a big boost of color. Um, I like the bricks. I, I would have liked to seen a little bit more brick walkway because this brick down here looks nice. And I think that would have rounded out, maybe brought these elements in a little bit more by showing that. So um, it does look a little bit crooked to me. I know some judges get a little touchy with that. Uh, the door looks like it's leaning off a little bit. And I think that might be because you were close and had a, a bit of a wide angle image, but other than that, I like I like it a lot. I would uh, crop out the the cut off peppers on the far my far right. This one right here. Yeah, and I would allow more room in front so the planters weren't cut off. But other than that, I think it's a very nice image. Mm. Yeah, very good. Okay, so. We are moving on. Our next image is Master Photojournalism Color. This scored a 999. Uh, title was Air Tackle. Comments are, it's a beautiful image. It's tack sharp. It tells a story. You can see the look in the player's eyes and a nice blurred out background. So I think it's pretty simple and straightforward. Oh, man. I'm going to have to figure out something else so I can get this thing out of my way. I think... Uh, I think you know, the focus having... is on the ball, not on the face. But say, say that one more time, Michael. I cut you off. I don't think the focus is on the face. I think it's on the ball. I do but, too. I think I think the focus is right here. Yes. Uh, but, but to get a an expression on the face, I think that's fantastic. To get UNLV doing anything is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, yes, yes. These days, uh, these these past few years, I agree with that. Yeah, so. uh, I haven't actually, I haven't been out to shoot a game in so long. I can't even remember last time, but, but I think this is a handled well, um, you know, you see, yeah, you see him coming in. So that's the title there. Air tackle is this guy coming in, even though you've all got these guys. I really like this capture, this guy coming in from this side, this guy coming in from this side, he's bullseye. You got the guy in the back. Uh, I think it's an amazing image. Um, I agree. Time. Yep. I agree. The, the, you know, it's it's hard to shoot these. Uh, this is probably a, a night game. Most of their games are nights out there. It's hard to shoot night games anyway. But I think the focus is right here, right in the middle, which is fine. His eyes might be a little bit out, but he also has that shield over there. So having that shield over kind of helps you, e even if it was a little bit off, that adds to it. And, and you expect that with that shield anyway. So I think this is amazing. Great image. Okay, this is great perfect. timing. Yes, yeah, perfect, perfect timing. Okay, so we've got one more in this line. Let's go to that next one. I already popped it on there. So, okay, so this is Master Photojournalism Monochrome. Uh, this is, title is Rebel Stop. This scored 888. Uh, judges' comments are the reason I did not give it a nine. And because 
The colors are blending together, and it would have been nice to see the eyes of somebody. Uh, sometimes I I try to listen to the comments, and sometimes I don't hear them all, so that I might have had that a little bit off, but uh, it was pretty much similar to that. Uh, then it just says it's a very good image. Um, obviously, the last image is a lot better than this one. I think this has a lot of action going on. Um, I kind of like seeing that. Uh, and I tell you, can't get this to grab there. You know, I kind of like having the the ref is standing right there, which is he's in a good spot. You have a cheerleader. So if you do look into the background, you see things that go along with the image, but you come right back up to the action, which I think is done outstanding because I see a lot of photojournalism that has a bunch of garbage in the back. And uh, I know that from experience by looking at most of my photojournalism images <laughs> from, from shooting races and baseball and everything else. And sometimes it's hard to be in the right spot at the right time. So in that aspect, I think it's done really well. I get the judge wants to see, you know, a reaction in a face, but you know what, there's a lot of action going on here. And sometimes that's hard to get this hand sticking out there is kind of funny. So I don't know if I would have tried to crop him out. Um, other than that, I like it. Um, as far as the colors blending together, um, I'm sure the judge means the tones are blending together. That's what I want to talk about next. And if anybody wants to talk about this, just let me know. We'll go right back to it. Uh, my next slide is talking about um, black and white, uh, black and white filters. And starting next year, I'm going to try and bring back the beginners group. And this will be something we talk about in the beginners group. So when you guys read articles that say the beginners group, don't feel like it's the, you're a master or you're advanced and you don't need to go to the beginners group because sometimes some of the things we talk about are going to help you a lot with other things. Um, shooting photojournalism for, say, from a newspaper standpoint, this is pretty good because newspapers didn't like really bright whites. The, the really bright whites we have here are probably on this helmet and they might be blown out a little bit. But there's good darks and there's a lot of gray. So you have a lot of gray throughout there. The contrast is a little bit high on this, but not very high, which is very good for newspaper articles. Uh, some people back in the day when they weren't doing color digital and turning them into black and white, they were using filters. And a lot of common filters, when you would buy a filter set, the most common was red, yellow, green. Sometimes, uh, like Hoya would put out filters and they would have red, yellow, green, and then they would have a blue and a yellow green. There was a cross in the middle. And there's reasons for all of those. One thing that aggravates me a lot is when I give people my pictures and they post them on Instagram and turn them into a black and white, because when they do that, on Instagram, it's mostly in kind of line with using a yellow filter, which kind of grays everything out. The whites, the blacks, and all the midtones, it kind of grays it out. So you would see a lot of photojournalistic photographers using yellow on a lot of events because they wanted to take down the contrast so that it printed better. Um, and that's kind of what the standard is for just changing something from a color to a black and white. If you actually take your time and you use Photoshop, you can use the channels. And you can use the channels kind of like filters where the reds will give you deeper skies and skin tones will be brighter or red flowers will almost turn white sometimes. Uh, when for landscape photographers, they, they would use red a lot because they wanted darker skies. Uh, Ansel Adams is a good example. Uh, he, he would have nice dark skies with white puffy clouds. And most time he got that, he did a lot of darkroom stuff, but he would get that by using red filters. You also see a lot of landscape um, photographers shooting black and white back in the day, use green, which would turn the foliage uh, brighter. So anything, a lot of green trees, a lot of green leaves, 
it would lighten them up. So you had more depth and more uh, texture within there instead of them all going dark. So, so I'm going to stop there. But this is something we will talk about in the future and probably at one of the beginners groups. The reason I talked about this with that is because our next images from competition are going to be dealing with filters in a different way. So I wanted to touch base on something a little bit simpler to understand before we go further. So going on to our next image, uh, we have some color infrared. Now, I think we've seen a lot of black and white infrared because we had three or four people for a while that were entering a lot of this. And what they had done, uh, speaking of Mateen or Gary Potts, they had taken, taken their cameras and turned them into a infrared camera, which means they're taking the infrared filters out. And again, we'll talk more on that later. I'm actually going to have Rick talk in a few minutes when I get to his images. But this right here is an image. This was entered in advanced unclassified color. It scored a 778. Uh, this is Pinion Pine is the title. The comments were, I think this is an interesting picture. Because of the color, it's infrared, color infrared. I don't think the subject matter is that interesting. Might be, might be more interesting. It might, I'm sorry, might be a more interesting tree or shape would give it more impact. Technically, it is done extremely well. So I, I believe this is a camera that may be um, changed to a color infrared camera. Um, there's different things you got to do once you do that. And, and again, adding different filters or in Photoshop using different channels, you can create more interest within the image, the colors, uh, how the colors are affected would probably be a better way to put that. Uh, this image, yes, I think there could have been more interest in the sky. I think having the tree bullseye did not give you a lot of impact. Um, sometimes we like the subtle pastel colors. Uh, this just didn't draw the attention of the photographers. So, or I'm sorry, the, the judges, not the photographers, the judges. Uh, and maybe having a little more contrast in it may have helped it. Does anybody want to comment on this before I move on? Okay, so we are going to move on. Um, the next selection of images are all from Rick Holmes, and Rick is sitting here, so I'm glad he's here to talk about it. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna do a little bit more in infrared, but I think again we'll we'll probably just cover what he has here, and then we can do this again, maybe in another beginners group, or um, if Rick can do a. Um, I forget what the name of the group is, Rick. Alternatives. That's it. Alternative. Alternative, alter alternative oh. processing. There we go. Alternative processing. So this may be something Rick will cover later on in the year, and we'll and we'll get to that later. But we are going to talk about a few things. So, um, Rick, I'm going to let you talk about these. I, I think I have them placed in here the way you sent them to me. Okay. And, and I'm not going to go over scores and all that stuff just because it's kind of irrelevant. I just want everybody to understand uh, what you're doing and what these are. And I think this is a good opportunity to do it. Okay. This was a, uh, a Nikon mirrorless camera that was converted to um, infrared by life pixels using the 590 nanometer conversion. I think they call it super color. And this is a picture as it came out of the camera. Uh, Joshua trees, of course, have green foliage. And uh, the sky, well, we know what skies look like. And the next version that Jerome will show of it shows with the red and blue channels 
swapped. That means going into the channel mixer and on the blue channel setting the blue amount to zero and the red amount to 100 and then going to the red channel and setting the red amount to zero and the blue amount to 100. And it uh, gives you a completely different image and the sky is much more normal. The next image of it is uh, another, well, I, I've swapped some of the channels, but not all. And is there one more of this, Jerome? Yeah, I think this is your final here. And the final one is this, where I've really done the full swaps and also gone into uh, the hue saturation and taken the, the cyans and made them uh, much more blue and taking the yellows and really beef them up. And uh, at this point, the ground looks like what it really did. And the sky was enhanced and the tree is a uh, completely different color. So there's a lot of manipulation you can do with the original image that came in. That's my comments on this one. Okay. This was okay. down at the uh, Heritage Did anybody, Museum. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Rick. Did anybody have any questions on this right here? Okay, now we'll go to the next one, Rick. Okay. This was at the Heritage Museum uh, on Boulder Highway. And uh, this is the raw picture out of the camera. The, it was very green. The, the grass was green. The trees were green. And next picture, I started working on it. And uh, this is with the channel swapped. The sky is back to a, a more sky-like color. The yellows are not really standing out at this point. And there should be one more version of this where I uh, did much like the other picture, really changed the cyans into blues, made the yellows much more vibrant. I took out the garbage can in front of it. I took out the uh, access to the water, flip to the previous one, Jerome. In, in the bottom left, you can see there's... Right here. Uh, yeah, that I took out and cl I cleaned up the picture. I even straightened it out a little bit. It's leaning a little bit to the left. Go to the final again, if you would. There you go. And uh, I've taken several pictures of this gazebo over the years. It's very photogenic from the front, from the back, from the sides. It's uh, really nice. There's leading lines that come into it from all directions. The trees do nice things in the sky in, up in the upper part. The church behind it comes through nicely. I had to adjust the brightness in the center with, with the infrared filtration on the lens you often get a hot spot in the picture because the infrared bounces around inside the lens on the black matting inside the lens. And I had to darken down the center part of this to make it reasonable. And it's done with a, a separate layer in Photoshop, a soft light layer. And we can discuss that when I do a presentation later in the year. Uh, I think this is this is great, Rick. This is a great image. Um, I did want to talk about yes, all these leading lines. You know, this this is bullseye, and a lot of times we, as judges, don't like things that are bullseye. But here, you have everything leading in. You know, you have foreground leading in, you have side ground, mid range leading in, even all the leaves and trees lead you back down. So this is this is great, great composition. Yourself. Can you do something more for your 
Oh, we have another TV on. <laughs> I love all these variations. It takes, sometimes it just takes a plain photograph and makes something really dramatic out of it. So I love all these uh, different, different renditions of the same scene. Each rendition brings out something different in the scene and just, uh, it's a wonderful technique and you've done a great job with it. Just... Absolutely. Thank you. Very good. So, uh, I did want to say, Canon USA, I'm going to do a program during WPPI at BNZ Camera. Um, don't exactly know what we're doing yet, but WPPI is coming back again. Uh, even though they were just here in August, I believe, they are trying to get back on their normal track of being in the springtime or was it winter, spring, I guess, February, March. Yeah, so um, I'll be doing something over there. And I think there's going to be a couple programs. I'm trying to help BNC do some more stuff over there as well. Um, right here, I want to bring up this guy. Uh, I mean, Rick, Rick is absolutely awesome with his infrared stuff. And I hope he'll do a program here later in the year. But also, I was talking to this guy. He didn't answer my last email. So I didn't want to show any of his stuff. But this link right here, and if you guys want it, just send me an email and I'll, I'll email you this page that has everything on there. Uh, this David Kennard, uh, I think his phone started with uh, plus 44. So I think that's overseas Europe somewhere. Uh, but he has some great templates. Like Rick, Rick just gave us three or four sections. This guy's done some templates with... Uh, like 20 different Hoya filters, Tiffin filters, polarizers with the infrared, with different infrared cameras. Uh, so that means a different infrared filter inside the camera and different filters on the front of the camera. And I mean, he's got some things that have like 30, 40 pictures in a row and it shows you all the difference and he has everything labeled. So he's a great resource to go look at this and check it out. Um, he had some great stuff on his, it's in his blog. So if you go, this is a link straight to the one I'm talking about. That's why if I send this to you, I can, I can get it to you. Uh, if you go to David Kennard, was it kennardphotography.com? Um, he's got some blogs and you kind of got to go through the blog to find them. So if, if you want this, just let me know and I'll send it to you. Uh, but some really good stuff between David Kennard and Rick Holmes. Uh, you can learn a lot about doing this infrared stuff. Uh, that is it. That is all I got today. Is there any other comments? Does anybody need me to go back to anything that we missed or you had a question about something we passed up? Thank you, Jerome. You're thank you, it was a welcome. fun night. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, Jerome. All right, guys. We will see you soon. Uh, have a happy new year and we'll start some good stuff next year. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.